Um, I'm Yuchiro Tachibana. Uh, I'm a Python developer who is uh, involved in some web development and sometimes in machine learning or computer vision applications and uh, sometimes the combination of all of them. So oh, I will start the stopwatch timer. And um, thank you for being at this room. You know, uh, welcome to my talk, real-time browser-ready computer vision apps with Streamlit. So um, as we know, nowadays, Python is very, very widely used in many fields, including computer vision, image processing, and machine learning, of course. However, in this talk, our main focus is not the model development or some theoretical things around it, but we are going to focus on the video input and video output on top of such models. This layer is important as it is what we have to consider when we want to create some applications with computer vision or machine learning models, or for example, when we want to create some demos or user interfaces on top of such models. By the way, yesterday there was a great talk about a similar topic provided by a developer from Hugging Face, so please see the uh, recorded video when it became available uh, for some like uh, reasons why uh, creating demos on ML models is important. So uh, by the way, in this talk, I'm going to uh, talk about similar topics from different perspective and different perspective and in different situation, uh, especially for video data. And um, by the way, uh, I think one of the most famous and popular and widely used libraries for that purpose, you know, to create some video data demos is OpenCV, GUI, and Video IO modules. I think, uh, especially the developers and researchers in the computer vision domain have seen the code snippets like this example many, many times, where, for example, cv 2vu capture is used to get input real-time video stream from some, some camera devices, and cv 2 im show to display output image frames, frames continuously in a while loop as a output real-time video stream on the local desktop GUI window, like this example. So now, a show of hands who has used OpenCV for for this kind of purpose, so you know, to create some demos or user interfaces. Oh, great! Thank you for very much. So some of you are already, you know, know something around it. But uh, please do not do not get afraid of, if you do not have experiences around it. This talk is, of course, also for you. Oh, oops. Anyway, um, we know that we can create such desktop GUI-based applications by using OpenCV or similar uh, libraries. Although, uh, but uh, this kind of, of approach has some limitations. For example, we cannot easily or simply share such applications with our users because such applications, you know, desktop GUI-based applications can run only on your local environment where you already have installed necessary packages or you, you already have set up necessary environments. So, in this talk, I would like to introduce a brand new way to create a shareable and easy to use web-based user interfaces or web applications on top of computer vision or machine learning models by using a Python web framework, Streamlit. I think this new approach can replace such conventional way of creating GUIs using OpenCV because it has some advantages or benefits. So, at this point, I'm going... I am going to show the demo app that shows what's possible uh, with this new approach. Oh, now I'm, I can use in this cloud-based version of this demo app thanks to the great Wi-Fi condition and thank you for the tech team from your Python. Thanks. And anyway, uh, as you see, this is the web app. You know, I'm using this app. It's on the web front page. Oh, it stopped. <laughs> right. And um, this app is now consuming the input real-time video stream from my local web camera like this. And on the backend server, some ML machine learning or computer vision model is running, which is, in this example, object detection. That detects me as a um, person like this. And this object as bottles, you know, the, this object that I love, that I bought uh, the souvenir from Dublin. Oh, I love this town. Anyway, um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> the, the object detection result is uh, rendered as bounding boxes on, on the output video frames. And this output, uh, real-time output video stream is now being rendered on the web front end in real time as a live video stream. All right. And 
The object detection result metadata is also being displayed in the tabular form, including class name or probability. And this app also has uh, interactive web UI components like slider here, through which users can change model parameter like uh, object detection threshold interactively, even during model execution at runtime. So you see that the object detection result changes when I uh, control the threshold by using this using uh, this slider. I think this feature is uh, so convenient for users because they can control some uh, application values or model parameters on web user interface with live video stream, right? So as then, as I uh, have explained in this example, web apps have some advantages or benefits compared to uh, conventional GUI applications like OpenCV-based ones. For example, web apps are easier to share user updates, which means that web apps can be easily shared with your users just by sending the links or URLs, and the users can also try out these applications just by opening the links or URLs with their web browsers. And whenever you make any changes or updates on the applications, users can access and use the latest versions of that application anytime. And web apps can be also used on smartphones because, you know, of course, uh, smartphones have web browsers. And uh, as we have seen in the previous example, web apps can have uh, some interactive and modern, cool looking and user friendly U UI components uh, that web uh, OpenCV based applications do not have. So um, until now, I have been explaining why this new approach to create web-based applications is preferable. And from now on, I would like to, to explain and demonstrate how we can create such applications and how easy it is. To do so, uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce Streamlit. Who knows Streamlit or just heard of it? Of it. Thank you, <laughs> many, of you many of you already know about it. That's great. Um, but Streamlit is a Python web framework. And its unique characteristic is that we can create web applications just by writing you know, only Python code. It does not require any front-end coding. And it provides uh, many various uh, predefined, uh, ready-to-use UI components. And there are also a third, many third-party components that we can make use of as building blocks to construct rich web applications with a small amount of code. And in addition to Streamlit, we are also going to use Streamlit Web RTC Package. That is an extension of Streamlit, or it can be also called as custom component of Streamlit. It enhances Streamlit to be able to deal with media streams, real-time media streams through web browsers on Streamlit applications. So with the combination of these packages, we can uh, create various kind of web-based computer vision or machine learning applications uh, with a small amount of code like these examples. Uh, since Streamlit and Streamlit WebRTC are only for UI construction and media stream I.O., um, you, uh, we, you know, you, we can use arbitrary kind of ML CV models at the application backend. So uh, from now on, I'd like to provide a step-by-step -step tutorial where we are going to walk through the development and deployment process of a Streamlit application with real-time video streaming capability. The first thing we have to do is to install necessary packages that, of course, include uh, Streamlit and Streamlit WebRTC package. And in this tutorial, we're also going to use OpenCV Python package, but it's a headless version in this tutorial because, you know, here in this tutorial, we are going to use OpenCV only for image, its image filter functions, and we do not, ne we do not need the GUI module from it because we are going to use Streamlit for that purpose, you know, purpose of creating GUIs. So I selected, I selected the headless version of it. Now, um, after installing the, these necessary packages, let's start coding uh, from uh, scratch, you know, with an empty file named Streamlit underscore app.py. So from this point, I'm gonna demonstrate the coding here. You know, in this editor, uh, there is already empty file is opened with a name Streamlit WebRTC. So I'm gonna write code, for example, importing Streamlit package as st alias. And for example, I'm going to call st.title function with some argument, for example, my first app. Uh, by the way, um, in the Streamlit world, we call these functions as components. So let's say here st.title component is used, and similarly I'm going to also use st.markdown component with the string 
argument, for example, that contains some markdown uh, content like, hello, you're Python 2022, and then I am going to save it. Then I move to the shell and run streamlit run command with an argument pointing to the input file name streamlit underscore app.py. With this command, uh, the streamlit server-side process spins up and the uh, web app is now opens, opened on the web browser tab like this. And you see that the content of this web page is uh, based on the source file just I, uh, that I have written. And each element is properly decorated to, uh, according to the component that I have used, like this is this is the title component, and the next is the markdown component. And after that, uh, let's make some changes on the source file, like inserting emojis like this, for example, and I save it. After saving it, uh, the Streamly server-side process detected the file change and shows these two buttons, so I'm gonna click the right one, always rerun button. Now, after that, you see that the front-end page is updated to be synchronized to the a source file like this. After that, whenever I make some changes on the source file and save it, the so, uh, front end page is automatically hot reloaded to, uh, synchronized, to be synchronized to the source file. So uh, you see that whenever I make some changes on the source file, the uh, front end content is automatically updated. This is you know, convenient, convenient and quick deployment, uh, development process. You know, this is a, a basic development process of Streamlit applications, where uh, all we have to do, the, all developers have to do is just write Python code, and the Streamlit command will do all the rest, including serving and hot reloading the web front end page like this. So now we have have learned how developers can create streamless applications, so let's move to development of computer vision application. Now I've cleaned up the previous example and uh, start writing a new code uh, where I'm going to use Streamlit WebRTC package and also going to uh, import WebRTC streamer component from that package and simply use it here. And uh, as a rule, Streamlit WebRTC package here requires a key argument as a unique identifier across this script, so please pass some uh, arbitrary string value to this argument. Here, I pass the string literal sample, uh, simply like this. Then I saved it here, and as I said, the web front end page is now automatically updated, and new element, a uh, new component has appeared. And let's see what happens when I click start button. You see that, um, all right. Uh, we have successfully embedded a new component uh, that deal with real-time video streams on our web page. Just uh, by adding a single line of code. This is quick and easy. But as you see, this is a you know, very basic version of video streaming components that does not have any image filter, I mean, any video effect. So this is kind of a boring or trivial example. So what we want to do next is to add some image filter into this video stream, right? So to do so, I'm gonna add, uh, you know, I'm gonna define a callback function that, um, callback function that accept one argument, one input argument frame. And at this point, I will leave the implementation, implementation of this callback empty and make it simply return the input frame without any processing like this. And I'm gonna also pass this callback function object to the video frame callback keyword argument of the video, uh, sorry, WebRT streamer component like this and save it. Then I will also import the Evi package. And please note here that the input argument of, and the return value of this callback is an instance of Evi.VideoFrame class. That is not a NumPy array. Uh, this is an important point of, uh, around this callback. By the way, uh, what is the Evi package uh, at the first place? This AV package is now here as importable because it's already been installed as a dependency of Streamlit WebRTC, but what's AV? This AV package is from this uh, PyAV library. That is, that is a Pythonic binding for FFmpeg. And FFmpeg is software to manipulate some image, you know, uh, not image, just, not just image, like a media file or media streams like video and audio. And a Streamlit WebRTC package is using FFmpeg as uh, in its internal, so that's why the, uh, that's why the reason why uh, it, its wrapper library PyAV appears on the interface of this callback function, callback object here. 
So what we have to do next is to convert this variable frame into a NumPy array by using two ND array methods with a keyword argument format, format uh, specified as BGR24. That represents a three channel color image blob in the color order BGR and eight bits for each color channel, so in total 24 bits. So I'm gonna assign the return value from this method to a new variable IMG and uh, here, uh, let me, let me show this page, and I'm gonna, uh, here I'm gonna create a new instance of av.videoframe class to be returned from this callback function by using from and the array method that accepts uh, input numpy array and also a format keyword argument specified as bgr24 like this. So now we have obtained a variable img that is a numpy array so now we are ready to implement some image filter inside this callback so i'm going to do that in this tutorial i'm going to use the cv2 uh, sorry a cv2 dot canny function that accepts one uh, input argument numpy array and it also accepts two parameters uh, sorry although i do not explain the details about this and here, at this point, I will uh, pass just two fixed ad hoc fixed values to this parameter like this. Although I do not explain the details about cv2.canny or the canny filter, uh, but in short, it is kind of an edge extraction filter and that, that is sometimes used, used in beginner classes of CV uh, computer vision courses, so I selected it as a sample image filter here. After that, I also uh, have to uh, use cv2.convert color with uh, color code color gray to BGL because the return value from cv 2 to canny here is a single channel grayscale image blob that has to be converted into three channel color image blob by using cv 2 to convert color uh, in order to be fed into uh, from and the area here. Anyway, now I have implemented a simple but fully functional image filter callback here. So what's uh, let's see what happens with this new code. So now I have successfully injected the cv2.canny image filter into uh, this uh, video stream, real-time video stream running on our web page, right? This is quick and easy uh, implementation, don't you think so? So, but it would be better, it would be better if users can control some underlying parameters like uh, these parameters that are now fixed value from the web front-end controllers. So to do so, I'm going to use some Streamlit components again. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to import streamlit package as st alias again here. I'm going to use st.slider component. This slider is the first argument threshold one, and the minimum value is zero, and the maximum value is, for example, 1,000, and the default value is, for example, 100. And I'm going to assign the return value from this slider to the variable th1, and I'm going to do the same for uh, threshold two, like this. And I will pass these two variables into uh, this canny filter parameters. I mean, I mean, I will going to uh, simply replace the fixed values with these variables. Then I'm going to save it. So after I saved it, uh, as I said, the front end page is now automatically hot reloaded and new sliders, two sliders have appeared on our web page, right? Then now users can change the parameters of a canny filter by using these sliders interactively. Now you see that the canny filter output changes when I control the parameters by using this slider. This is very, you know, interactive steps, interactive flow of development and also usage. So, and in addition to that, what's interesting or surprising and exciting here is that we could implement a fully functional web-based computer vision application that has real-time video streaming capability and some interactive input UI widgets only with uh, approximately 10 or 20 lines of code. So this is quick, uh, easy and I think it will be a great deal to switch from the conventional way of creating GUIs using OpenCV to uh, this new approach that is based on Streamlit because this Streamlit based approach uh, does not require additional effort or additional steps but it provides some more um, advantages or benefits. 
And, okay, I'm going to back to the slide here. Oh, not this one. And please note again here that you can use any models as the application backend, which means that you can put any code inside this callback. I mean, you can replace this simple canny filter with any model that you like, no matter how simple, no matter how complicated it is. So you have uh, freedom or you have fle flexibility to create any kind of uh, com web based computer vision or machine learning models, of course, including these examples in the slide, for example, pose estimation with media pipe or uh, some stri stri transfer or object detection with some uh, deep neural networks, and anything else, whatever, whatever you like. Right now, we have developed the application in our local environment, so what's next is to deploy that application to the cloud environment. Although there are various uh, cloud services where Python runtime is available, especially for Streamlit applications, Streamlit Cloud is the way to go. As, the, it's, as its name implies, Streamlit Cloud is a managed cloud service to deploy Streamlit, Streamlit applications that is provided by the official Streamlit team. And the deployment process to Streamlit Cloud is very quick and easy, so let's see that. Here, oh, and... Uh, at first, please note, uh, please note that I added requirements.txt that represent the necessary packages to be installed as the booting a process on the cloud environment. Although this list, uh, this list does not contain the Streamlit package that will be automatically installed in the Streamlit cloud environment by default. Anyway, after, in, after adding these necessary packages, uh, I am going to add these files to the Git work tree and create a commit with these files and uh, push that commit to the uh, re remote GitHub repository. Then I'm going to navigate to the Streamlit Cloud dashboard and uh, click the new app button here and select the GitHub repository name here and click the deploy button here. Then, after a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes of the booting a process, the uh, Streamlit Cloud will start serving the application that we have developed and pushed uh, from the uh, cloud environment with a globally unique URL so that users can now access and use this application uh, from anywhere only with their web browsers. Now, you see that our application is now uh, Ser now being served from the cloud environment, cloud server, and now is uh, accessible and usable only with web browsers. Right, so now I have uh, shown the quick deployment process demonstration to the Streamlit Cloud. Uh, please note uh, here that actually there are some additional things that you have to take care of when you actually deploy Streamlit applications that use Streamlit WebRTC package to some cloud environment, including Streamlit Cloud. Um, I'm sorry that I could not explain all about it in this talk because I do not have enough time, so please refer you know, please read the official readme of the uh, Streamlit WebRTC package and its corresponding section that explains the remote host deployment. It does not require so much additional steps, but there is some uh, necessary things. Right, now we have reached to the last two slides. So my, my message, you know, the uh, takeaway message from this talk session is please enjoy creating real-time media streaming component, uh, no, no, so, uh, real-time media streaming applications that can be used on web browsers, which means that uh, applications that can be easily shared with your friends or um, users worldwide, and it does not require so much effort, so much amount of code as we have seen in this uh, previous demo. And, uh, all right, so you can find my username, Witwix, on GitHub or some SNS and the official Streamlit online forum. So please follow me or contact me for any comments, questions, discussions, feature requests, or something else, whatever. And I'm so uh, welcome. I'm open to all of such, such things. And importantly, please put a star to the repository of Streamlit WebRTC package as the author of it. Me, we'd be so glad if the number of star grows, right? Thank you very much for listening to my talk. Any questions?
you want to say sessions? First of all, very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just wondering how well the whole thing scales with having multiple clients uh, connect to the same URL. Oh, that's a great point. You know, as you imagine, the machine learning computer vision model, I mean, the computationally expensive model is running in a single instance of the server. So this is not scalable. So I think it's better for you to think about this new approach to create only kind of a prototype demo or some uh, even production ready application that is only for uh, focusing on small amount of users at single, you know, at time point. So it depends on the server capacity. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Thank Hello. you very much for the talk. I actually had the same question, but I also have a second one. Mm -hmm. uh, can you supply a video file to this as a demo as well, not only live video? Oh, thank you very much. That's what I forgot to <laughs> tell. Thank you very much. Uh, you can find all of the code from my um, GitHub repository, like, you know, the, the source code of the demo that I have demonstrated in this talk is uh, found something like, you can, uh, Euro, Python, something, something, something. All right, Euro, Python, stream, web, RTC. repository is, contains the code that I have written in this talk. And also, I have shown some uh, demos or examples like object detection or state transfer or something else that is also linked from the official Streamlit WebRTC package repository. And you can find all the links from all the examples I have demonstrated in this talk. Uh, so please check out. Thank you, so, but I, there are still time, so let's see some more demos. <laughs> I'm not sure it <laughs> probably work. Oh, I will, sorry, I will access it from private hub because it, it's on some cookie issues. This is the demo that I haven't shown in this talk. This is the real-time speech to text up. You know, uh, audio data is not the main topic in this, uh, main topic of this my talk, but uh, please note that StreamLit WebRTC is able to deal with not only video stream, but also audio stream, and probably it work. <laughs> now loading, and hello, hello, hello Europe. Sorry, I think that this is due to the, my non-native English. The uh, audio model is trained in the English native speakers, so I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but the interesting thing about this demo is that this uh, server-side process does not depend on any external APIs like Google Speech or something like that. This uh, server-side process hosting is hosting the uh, speech-to-text model on its own memory. Uh, and the model is model itself is provided by the Mozilla, the great project Deep Speech. But you know, you can create uh, such you know self-contained uh, applications by, by using these kind of technologies. All right. <laughs> hey, don't do, do not do not see that <laughs> the translated text. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and actually, I'm not a professional in the audio field, so probably I will go to ask someone who are familiar in audio technologies, like a Spotify guy who presented a talk yesterday. Uh, anyway, please do not see that. <laughs> and uh, let's see other examples. Like, um, this is a style transfer that I have shown in the as a screenshot. Hmm. I hope it work. It's, it will be working well. And anyway, there is one minute left. Uh, I think that that is a good time to show one demo. Hmm. Sorry, it doesn't work. I haven't checked it for this uh, session. Okay, but. Uh, 
I'm sorry for failing this uh, last demo in this talk session, but I hope you feel some potential of this situation. <laughs>